the idea for the mask was originally we wanted to have something. Well, the way it came about was it was taken after a movie called Man in the Iron Mask, a Vincent Price movie. And um, we told the guy who designed the cover that, and they came up with something else, a little bit like a hockey mask or something. The way the story ended up being was there was a guy in the straight jacket on the other album who was a Quiet Riot fan, and he was banging his head so much that they uh, had to put the mask on him to protect his face and they put him in a straight jacket which was actually his leather jacket that's where the buttons of us in a band and they stuck him in a padded cell to protect him from his own mental health and so this this new album condition criticals cover as you see here is a continuation of the story uh, they took him out of the straight jacket and they put him on a gurning and now he's going to wait his doom or whatever it is that we're going to do to him our drummer frankie benelli says that we should put him in a wearing blender on the next album cover but i think it's a little too gruesome for our tastes <laughs> do you know what i mean Why don't you give me an inimitable Kevin DeBrow quiet ride uh, introduction, Int introduction to the uh, to the latest video. Okay, lock up your daughters and hide your sheep, cause here's Quiet Riot with my mama. We're all crazy now. Okay, welcome back into Tunes Brothers. Uh, first thing I want to say is, sorry, last week's episode was short and shitty and full of problems. Uh, that's just the way it goes. Um, uh, I forgot what the fuck we're doing. Oh, yeah, uh, this was Scotty's album, so I'll turn it over to Scotty. Yeah, man. All right, this is a sophomore album from one of my favorite bands of all time um not because they you know had success with metal health and uh, number one selling metal album on the chart uh, i never knew about any of that stuff when metal health came out i was like in the eighth grade so um i just loved the music the sound and condition critical to me it it's about as good if not better than you can get as a backup album for metal health i i know it didn't do quite as good but it didn't do bad um i just i can't figure out how it didn't as good as it is now that's my opinion guys here um Metal Health, I love, too. Uh, there's just more songs on this one I like as a collective album. There's two songs on here that are throwaways to me. There's ten tracks on this album. Eight of them are playlists for me constantly. Uh, two of them are throwaways for me. Um, I don't know. Uh what happened with those two and then again you guys may like those two better we'll figure that one out as we go i love it it's one of the great quite right albums in my opinion those first two were just bombastic and they just lit up the 80s when they came out man so fucking hard and just kind of paved the way for every fucking body else all right take over <clears throat> Darren. all right um in, now I did enjoy metal or I guess metal health. Um, I, I remember when that album came out, I spent a lot of my free time at my friend's family's arcade in Garrison, North Dakota. And I'm pretty sure, you know, bang your head or metal health and come on, feel the noise pretty sure those two songs were played almost back to back for six weeks <laughs> yeah. and that song was always being played in the in the arcade right um i didn't like condition critical as much i felt that it was very similar in nature um just more i felt it was more watered down um and that they they tried the same formula for success, um, but the creativity wasn't necessarily there. Um, but 
overall, I mean, it's an album that I could put on and not and have it, you know, playing in the background to whatever it is that I'm doing. And I wouldn't complain about it. I mean, I don't really think there's much on here that is complete garbage. Um, but um, then again, I still don't feel it's as good as, as their debut. Cool. Good. Most people don't. For a, Yeah, I, I don't think most people have heard it as much. I, I For some reason, like you said, Scott, it just didn't get the attention. Maybe it's because everybody else from the hair metal scene had exploded too since then. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, before I give my take on the album, I just want to show Ooh, hey, man. that I have got a Toons Brothers shirt sweatshirt made today. Awesome. And dude. by Ice Print oh, Works. I know the owner, Josh. Uh, yes, Josh. You know him. Okay. Yeah. yeah he runs. He, he, he runs jiu-jitsu. Yep. He, he's got his hand in everything. He is an entrepreneuring stud. I met him. He was at uh, Cloverdale last week doing, uh, you know, exper- or not experiments, uh, what do you call it, samples of the jiu-jitsu or whatever uh, during the health fair thing. Uh, so, you know, I met him. We got to talk, and then somehow we got into podcasts, and I found out he does printing, so I gave him a shot today. Outstanding. I may redo uh, the logo, not the look of the logo itself, but the colors. Yeah. Um, he had to half tone this one because it was going to have a white, some white coming through in the background. Uh, but the neon, not maybe necessarily the neon colors, but I think because I had the neon effect on it and the smoke, everything kind of blurs together. There's no real outline to the letters. So I think I may go to like black, blues, reds, greens. Well, we can do any color you guys want. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to use the same. It's going to be the same. I'm going to change the lettering to more legible. It's going to be like a black letter, old English for the Toons Brothers. So it's more legible and less smashed together. But other than that, the skull, the wings, all that stays. But you can mix and match colors, whatever you want. I don't want to keep us to one color anyway or one color scheme. But, yeah, he does great work, got done within a half hour. And uh, so if anybody wants one, let us know, sweatshirt or T-shirt, either way. Uh, and we'll put together, you know, a list and get a bulk thing done. If not, if you guys want one, let me know what colors you want, stuff. We can talk about that off air. Hey, uh, if, you, if, you anyway. thought, if you thought about this right quick, then you can get to your take. Have you thought about shortening it up and, and, and like doing Toon Bros? What do you think, Darren? Like the the letter mm-hmm. would be so long, Toon Bros? Or I mean, I can it, call it, I it can call it Butt but Brothers. Good. It doesn't, it, it's just, I know, it just, the thing is, I can do that if you wanted to say that, but I don't know right now if that Toon Bros is available it, as a YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. I think it's already taken, actually. Gotcha. It's probably already taken. That's fine. I just But like I said, I, I can I can just put Scott on there with our logo. It doesn't have to say anything. The logo is the main thing, right? So anything you guys want. How do you know Josh? Um I might I first met him at uh, a party that a coworker of my wife was having, and it turns out that she lived right next door to my mother on East Central. I'm talking the door, the house one door down, right? So uh, he was there. He was a friend of the boyfriend or husband of of her coworker. Um, I know we started talking that night, and he had talked about uh, the jujitsu. Um, so I went there a few times, t- um, to work out with them, um, and just became, you know, kind of chummy with them. And it's not like we're best buds or anything like that, but that's how I met him. Yeah. He's a, he's a phenomenal guy. And, oh, and he's man, got I tell you, he is a, he is a freaking bull. I mean, oh, when yeah. I was, cause you know, that most of them were girls that were at that health thing. And, you know, so I stepped to do some of the techniques with him and she, Jesus, man, alive. But he just puts oh. a shoulder into you. You knock the wind out of you. It's just oh. amazing. 
try <laughs> rolling on the mat with him. I mean, I oh, had no, to, thanks. I had to, <laughs> I had to practice one of the drills or whatever, and he was the the person. And I mean, that I was you know practicing with, I, I tapped out in like two and a half seconds. I mean, yeah. it was. Yeah, he's you ever got a tough guy complex. Go go match up with one of these mixed martial arts guys of any kind, man. You'll find out quick you're not tough. Darren <laughs> Darren, we know you like rolling around on mats with guys, but keep that under wrap. We don't and it's it's better than having their balls on their chin like ball chin and, I mean okay. ball chin and <laughs> yeah. I had to okay, take, I had to take so that's my, that's my plug for Josh and Ice Print Works, and we're working on things. Darren's working on things. Like I said, color schemes, anything, sky's the limit. It just seems the neon stuff, not necessarily the neon colors, but I use the neon effect, and that blurs everything. It may look cool as hell on your phone or on the Tumblr like Darren had made, but when you're trying to print it on clothing, it just if there's no yeah. chiseled border to the logo and to the name and stuff it all just kind of you know yeah and i was looking at that when just going through the stuff uh with the equipment that my wife has and and the way that it is right now it would almost have to have like a box around it yeah and that's and, what he, that's and, why he had to half tone it to get rid of that box exactly and so and, that, and, that and was in going half to be an issue. your neon colors go pastel so and that's a big part of that is because i got this damn smoke effect in the background because i was doing what looks cool on a computer screen right without ever thinking about how does that translate and this guy's got like a twenty thousand dollar machine i was there i watched him do it i mean it's it's an amazing process so okay Back to condition critical. This song or this album, I really, I know a handful of songs, but honestly, I never really listened to it that much before this assignment for whatever reason, like we we're talking about. I love the songs they released and I knew a couple they didn't, but it was never a go-to like their first. And it just has to be kind of lost in the shuffle with everything else that came out. It's the only thing I can think of. Uh, by all the other bands, but I found it enjoyable. I mean, it, 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 I found out of four listens now, this thing, it puts me in a good mood quickly. Um, it, it, no, it's not as dark and heavy as Metal Health at all. That's still my favorite. And it does sound kind of like in the same vein, but poppier. Um, like, I guess you could say watered down a little bit, but I enjoyed the hell out of it. There's only three songs on here that I could give or take, you know, the bottom three. But other than that, I enjoyed it. Awesome. So, so Scotty, you start us off. All right. I'm going to start with one of the two tracks that I, I... Look, I can listen to them, but they're they're just throwaways to me. And that's how good the rest of this album is to me. So... Number 10 for me is Scream and Shout. Uh, it, it just had a, I don't know, man. It, it, it reminds me, and I got to use your favorite band to, to do this with, of Gene Simmons' is like, fits like a glove or something. You know, you're just throwing, yeah. it's like he's just throwing random words out there, man, and Scream and Shout. But the damn riff's awesome. The music in it is great. It's the lyric, it's the chorus and the verses in that that just throw me off on Scream and Shout. And, uh, and it always has. It ain't nothing new. I've been listening to some of it since 1984. So, well, wait a minute. Yeah, 1984. Um, so uh, that's my number 10, Scream and Shout. Not horrible, but just not glued together that well, in my opinion. Yeah. Right. For me, my number 10 song is the title track. I think it should have been called Condition Terminal instead of Condition Critical. <laughs> Mid-tempo, boring. Um, it just This is a classic filler to me. It, I just I just didn't care for it at all. Wow. Um, and I know like on the album, it was a hidden track, I guess. Um, is what I had read. 
And I don't understand how they hide the song that probably kicked off. How do you hide the first time. song? You don't, you don't like how it. Yeah. Way in the middle there where they stop and it's just a drum and he's, and it goes, and he just starts going, condition critical. You don't like it? Never mind. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm not saying, I mean, that part of the song aside, I mean, I just didn't care it for it, slower. right? I mean, it is and I, and I and I listened to this thing more than Rob. I mean, I'm pretty sure in the past two days, I have 10 to 12 listens of this whole album. Well, I can't say so, nothing. And I, I mean, I, I tried, because um, sometimes, like I said, my first impression isn't always the one that I stick with. Um, I did have another song at number 10 before, um, and that one's moved, gotcha. moved a little bit, um, but condition critical for me just wasn't worth it. All right. Fair enough. Uh, I will say this and Spotify is only one measuring stone here, but it's the third most listened to track yeah, on the it album. Is. But yeah. number two and number three aren't even close to the number one most listened to track. So no. Oh yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, so number 10 for me is the only one I had to put the dreaded word words generic and filler next to. Uh, and that is, we were born to rock. Um, <laughs> that's the only song I would say, and I don't hate it, but it's the only song I could say, yeah, not right now, and hit skip. Really? God dang, Sorry. man. Sorry, yeah. That, <laughs> wow, you don't love you. Like, That shocked me, too. Just the ending of that fucking song, bro. Sorry, man. <laughs> but anyway, I, 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 I respect your decision, man. That's just the way it is. So, all right. Number nine. Yeah, there, and, and again, our typical spiel fits here. There's nothing on here I hate. It's just the last, the eight, nine, and ten for me are ones where you know if I'm in a really good mood and I'm busy, I'll, I could leave it play, but otherwise I'll skip. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, number nine for me, and I was wrong so far. I'll see when y'all do y'all's number nine. Uh, number nine for me is bad, bad boy. It's. It's okay. It's better than screaming shout to me, but that's about it. Um, to me, these last two were definitely fillers, man. They, they didn't, for some reason, the last two on here for me that I don't like didn't sound, I don't know, the album took a different path when those two songs come on. I don't know if it just something they threw on there or Hell, who knows? It may be the first damn things they wrote for it. I don't know. But anyway, those two songs to me, Bad Boy, my number nine, Scream and Shout, number 10, just totally didn't fit the album for me. I know I said before there was one track, but when I got to listening to it, you know, in depth again, I thought I knew it, you know, memory as many times as I've heard it, but sometimes things, uh, you listen a little bit better with headphones. You know, I'll repeat myself again. Um, but bad boy, it's it's not bad, but it just, it's subpar. Number nine. All right. For me, the number nine song I felt was a poor attempt at cloning the song Thunderbird. Um, and that is the power ballad winners take all um i think debro sounds good on the song i like i said to me trying to rip off thunderbird uh from metal health um kind of torqued me a little bit um but again to me this isn't this just isn't a good song for this album i didn't care for it and by oh, right. Scott's reaction, I can tell that he, I know, I, I think on one of our last episodes that you mentioned that you liked the power ballad uh, on this album. And like I said, it's, and as Rob said, I don't feel like it, there's anything on here that I hate. I mean, I said in my like summary, right, that this is an album that I could put on and listen to um, all the way through and not necessarily 
you know, I wouldn't complain a lot or sit there and just wanting to skip something because I can't stand it. Just overall, I just didn't think it was a good song. I mean, good enough. I mean, again, I feel like a lot of this stuff was watered down. I'm still trying to figure you guys out with ballads too, man. What you like, what you don't like. So I got you. Yeah. Um, hey. Okay. Number nine. Matched up with Darren. Winners take all. And I have this being a poor man's We Are the Champions. I don't like We Are the Champions. That. I do not like We Are the Champions at all. I hate the cheesy message. I hate the rah rah camaraderie kumbaya bullshit that has no place in rock and roll. I hate it when Kiss does it. I hate it when anybody does it. And Quiet Riot's no exception. If the song's words meant anything else, I would like it more. But this is just the same tempo, the same whiny, oh, we're all in this together and we're the winner. I just, man, I tell you, there's a ballad on here I do like. This ain't it. Okay. I'm done. Well, slower. Okay. All right. No, man. Put it. I got you. I got you. Um, number eight. I'm finally hitting on one that I love. Like I said, th- from here up was fucking hard for me. Not so hard for y'all, I can tell. But damn. Uh, condition critical. I think Darren's done touched on this one. The drums in this alone, the damn music and Kevin DeBro's vocals, I love the hell out of this. It's I know it's number eight, but I love the hell out of condition critical, man. It is just a, yeah, it's not come on, feel the noise tempo or metal health or nothing, but it's just that damn driving force fucking tempo all the way through. I love it. I love the fucking lead on there. Jesus Christ. He's playing out of his skin on that fucking song. Fuck yeah, man. Number eight, condition critical. Okay. Um, This next song for me, my number eight is the one that initially I had at number 10, um, but it grew on me a little bit. um, And it's one more thing that Quiet Riot ripped off from Slade. And it's and it might be something that you're not aware of. Mm-hmm. They took the song title Stomp Your Hands and Clap Your Feet from an well album done. name from Slade. That was well done. so the UK release of the album Old New Borrowed and Blue when it was released in the U S was called stomp your hands and clap your feet. That's three songs. I don't like Slade though, that I know of. No, no, no. They just took the title. It's not their song. It's just the title. Yeah. Okay. This is, I mean, this isn't a Slade song. It's the name of one of their albums that they used that album name for the song. Gotcha. And again, I mean, it's just, one more thing that they took from Slade, right? And like almost like they wanted Slade as like a tribute, like they were a Slade tribute band or something yeah, like that. I don't record know. company. Um, yeah, yeah, the record was, company that, I know pushed that was forced on Kevin Dubro, even even uh, come on, feel the noise. That's he never wanted to do that. I, I get that, and I know there's something he could do about that. I'm not sure if the record company says, Hey, how about you write a song called stomp your hands, clap your feet. Right. I mean, DeBro wrote most of this stuff um, for this album. Um, so I don't know, again, if it's just it's hard to say that something that title could be just a complete coincidence. coincidence? I, just, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, it might be one of the dumbest titles for a song ever. And the song well, it's not horrible. It almost matches that dumb title. I, I mean, I know it's a little bit more upbeat. I mean, it's again, it's trying to pump people up. 
um, it just doesn't, it didn't pump me up. Right? That's, that's where I'll you know, it's, it's funny you should bring that title up because as I was listening to this for the last time this morning, that song came on and I had thought, you know, I wish I knew like Dane Cook, you know, one of these real physical comedians. And I would say, put this in your set, this title name, and then try to imitate what it would look like to be stomping your heads while clapping your feet. I think that'd be a hilarious skit. It should be fucking impossible to clap your feet while you're stomping your hands, right? You'd have to be like, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, so my number eight, uh, Scott already touched on Scream and Shout. And I think, first of all, that flanger in the intro, I am a sucker for flanger and talk box when it comes to guitar effects. I was like, oh, fuck, I don't remember this song. But the thing that kills it for me, uh, unlike Scott's, not so much the lyrics, that rapid fire speed metal double bass through the entire song, it doesn't fit. Uh, and and I, I have that pet peeve with a lot of metal bands, especially these modern metal bands, right? They'll have a cool riff, a cool chorus, but through the whole fucking thing. So, dude, double bass, unless you're in speed metal, should be done on fills, not as your main timed beat through the thing. I hate it. It's distracting. It makes the sound sound the song sound messy and cluttered. Uh, so that killed it for me. But other than that, it would have been a great song if they had just done away with that yeah i agree because that's my least favorite one never been my favorite one on here and it's just totally i don't know it just don't hit me right either bro uh i get crucified on my reaction channel anytime i talk about that double bass like that oh you just don't know what good is no i'm not saying it doesn't take talent I'm saying when your song's a little more than mid-tempo, why do you got a fucking 10 times tempo drum going? It doesn't make sense. Well, at least uh, I I come on here uh, with this album not knowing. I thought, well, I'm I'm about 50-50 anyway. You know, uh, Shotgun Messiah worked. Um, The poor evidently didn't. So I thought, well, let's sling this at them. They know who the hell this is, you know. Uh, so so far, oh, I like the album. Yeah, not, I like the I'm album. I, I'm these not, these are just the, these are just the three songs that I just think are okay. That's it. I, I'm not getting the mob rules. So uh, it's a win. No, no. Uh, no, and for me, it's the the top four on the list, right? That just don't work well for me, um, but. The, the sixth then after that, right, I feel are are good. Okay. All right. Number seven? Yeah. Yeah. This one, like I said, guys, I love these songs. I love this video. I mean, even though the intro is absolutely insanely fucking long, how, how long has it been since y'all have seen the video to party all night? How long has it been since you've about watched month, it? About a month. About a month. Man, that damn intro is about as long as the song. Yeah, literally about a month. I because I I just was binge watching eighties metal videos about a month ago, and that was one. Of them. And I love the video, but man, you don't think you're you think you're watching a damn sitcom, dude. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, man, it's like damn, where are we gonna go here? Uh, but I love the song "Party All Night." Yeah, man, it is just the the stereotypical hard rock metal song to put on the album in the 80s, especially. And uh, evidently, that's what they done a lot. You know, uh, I I bet it would have been a blast to be on the road with these crazy songs. Um, Gary, here's your reminder. I love the video. It's just, Darren got a reminder. Six more better than this one but party gotcha. all night is absolutely a jamming fucking song you know jamming tune bros there you go yeah. all right my number seven you two have already touched on and that's scream and shout in my notes i had this my question is what's with the double bass i mean that's what i had 
in that song or for my notes for that song. Um, the rest of it, I mean, was okay. It just didn't have enough. To me, this is a classic filler with an annoying double bass. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to spend much more time on this since you two have already talked about it. Um, so that's where I'll leave it. Cool. I'm glad you, you had the same thing because I mean to tell you on my reaction channel, and usually I have to bring that up with these female Japanese bands, these modern female Japanese metal bands. It's Jesus fucking Christ. Where, where's the fire? What are you doing? Whatever happened to having a pocket and a groove? Which is, do, 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 do. Eric Singer was the king of double bass for Phil's. You know, not just to have that as your 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 one four beats or whatever. Right? I mean, yeah, yeah it's horrible. The chorus. Okay, my number seven. I'm not. What's that? The chorus on that. What's horrible. that, Scott? I can't believe y'all like the chorus on that song. Damn, scream! What is that? I love it. I just don't mind it. Uh, okay. All my right. my big my bigger question is I can't wrap my head around why you guys don't like my number seven, which is the start of the songs I like in Condition Critical. This is the slower song I was referring to. Th this is just. I don't, I don't even, I got badass heavy beat and groove is the best I could do to describe what I'm hearing. This is just condition critic. I mean, it's just, man, it's just keeps you, it's almost like a slow march into battle or something. I don't know how to describe it. I think the song works. Um, you know, I guess everybody hears things differently. I'm not always looking for it. Maybe that's the difference. I'm more of a mid to lower tempo guy, even a non ballad. I don't like fast rushed, no, no, no type kiss songs and shit. I can't. I go back to where's the fire? Where's the fire? What are you in such a fucking hurry for? I like a plotting song with a groove that just you can just stay in time with. Yeah. That's it for me. <clears throat> and, uh, Condition critical is repetitive, but it's not a bad repetitive, in my opinion. It's it's more drawn out. It's not just condition critical. Condition critical. He stretches it out. So yeah. I, I love how the, the tempo of the song on that one. But yeah. All right. Uh, number six and. Damn, man, it just gets better for me as we go up. It was hard to place some of these songs, and y'all have not touched on this one yet, so I guess uh, it's not too bad. Red Alert, man, this house is a rocking, baby. Tearing the walls down, bro. Fucking intro is wickedly awesome, dude. The whole damn song, man. I love it, man. Red Alert, dude. It's just a rocking song, and... I just, you know, just like on their other album, um, I know Metal Health and Come On Feel The Noise got a lot of attention. They played them pretty much every time live. But, like, you know, Love's a Bitch and Don't Want to Let You Go, those are the other two songs I really like on that album. You know, you just don't hear much of. Uh, on this one, man, I, I could have picked all of these besides the last two and you know, I know they played a few of them when I've seen them a couple of times, but it's been so damn long I can't remember. Um, but Red Alert, man, is a fucking rocker, dude. And I love it. Nothing bad to say about it. Number six. All right. And as I mentioned a little bit ago, it's at this point where my review gets a little bit better. These are the songs that I did enjoy the most. Um and so ring the bell because I have red alert at number six as well. I think this is some classic Kevin Dubrow on this song. Um, of course, is a little bit repetitive, but it didn't bother me that much. Um, I, I agree with you, Scott. It's a rocker. I like I, said, I enjoyed this song. Uh, a great listen. Awesome. All right. Number six for me is Sign of the Times, uh, a good opening track. And I originally had this much higher until I got into some of the other ones, uh, but still a strong, strong song. I love the chorus, and it's firmly implanted as one of the songs that I would go to on this album. <clears throat> Damn right. 
damn right, dude. And speaking of sign of the times, number five, bro. Wow. Great freaking intro, man. It, they come on rocking it out. That Just that freaking <laughs> boom, and then they start going, dude. It's, you know, sign of the times. Having fun ain't no crime, bro. I love it, man. I've listened. Like I said, I've heard this damn thing so much, man. And it's one thing about quite right songs. And I don't know. I can't speak for everybody. Even the hits. Come on, feel the noise. Like round and round for rat. I could listen to it every day, ten times a day, and it never gets old. It. Ne I never get yeah. dr drug out on it like rock and roll all night or some shit like that. I don't know what it is about certain songs that never get old for me and wow. that's it man i mean they they've really put I, I don't i don't think there's any right or wrong answer but if you're going to use round and round and come on feel the noise as examples against rock and roll all night they're complete songs mate they got melodic solos they got the choruses they got the verse rock and roll all night's pretty much just an anthem at its finest to where there's no frills there's no nothing yeah it's just one big it's like an Irish pub song almost. I mean, the music is secondary <laughs> to that song where, you know, with with Round and Round and Come On, Feel the Noise and Metal Health and stuff, it's much more than the words, right? The music's a huge part of it. With Rock and Roll Night, the music, really, you don't even notice. An Irish pub <laughs> song. <laughs> That's the first time I've heard this. <laughs> oh, good one, bro. Good one. I like that. Uh, no, man, it's not. I don't know, man. What it, What is it that you say about songs like that, man? I mean, some songs, it's like they age well and they don't even sound old and they don't get old to you. Yeah. Some songs do. And, and you know, everybody yeah. likes it. just the way it works. Yeah. 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 Yep. All right. As much as it pains me to be synced up with Scott again, <laughs> I oh, have geez. Sign of the Times at number five. I know we weren't far off with Rob on this. Um, he had it just a, at number six. This is, uh, like I said, for a song that uh, kicks off the album, I really enjoyed this. I thought it was a great opening tune. Um, I, like Rob, initially had this higher on my list, but after multiple listens, other songs seemed to fare a little bit better. Um, this all the, I mean, but this song in particular, I do feel like this is the one that they try to clone the, the metal health uh, on. It's like, and when it comes to trying to do that, it feels like again that you're getting a after being served two stiff drinks that then they slide you the one that's completely watered down, right? Oh. Um, so it's a good song, but I think that again, after the more I'd listened to it, that's the way I felt that that song had was the watered down metal health. Um, and that's the reason why it, it slid up the list a little bit and came in at number five. And, and usually when bands do that, it's with their, their first successful ballad, right? They try to force feed another one. That's almost the same thing. And it just doesn't measure up, but yeah, good call. <laughs> Back to you, Scott. Right. No. Is it me? Yes. No, Rob. No. Yeah. You're number, number five. Number five. Yeah. Darren shit all over this, wiped his ass, and threw it out. I like, and I always have before, this is one of the few songs I knew off this album, is Stomp Your Hands, Clap Your Feet. I don't care what the words are. I just think it's a catchy. This is a, kind of goes along with Party All Night feel with the way the chorus is it's a party tune man i just like i said i was thinking about a comedian trying to pull that off on stage for laughs you know so yeah it's goofy title but first of all it's a perfect 10 and you can never go wrong with perfect 10 anybody who knows me should know by now that's singing in the middle dropping the the, the music out just to the drums love that it's just a, a fun party sing-along chorus yeah it sounds goofy if you overlook at it but I like. Damn right. Just imagine Dave Bagley singing this song, and that's <laughs> again, that's why it, it it doesn't work. No, it's just yeah. 
it brings yeah. back bad memories. Yeah, it works because that's my number four, and this song will kick your fucking face in. It won't just stomp your hands or clap your feet. This is a rocker from start to fucking finish. And I mean, as soon as they start, bro, bam. And it is fucking awesome. I don't care what the hell they're singing about on this song. It is badass. His, his, the freaking verses he's singing in here, man, it almost sounds like they're doing something with his voice. And I don't really know if they are, but he is really fucking singing his ass off. The drums, man, Vanelli is going off. Stomp your hands, clap your feet, man, it is bad to the bone. And it is my number four. A true rocker, man. And bringing up, bringing up Benelli again, I, I can't stress enough, and I know we touched on this at some point in another video. Um, can we all just agree he's probably one of the most underrated drummers of all time? Yeah, now, I'm not definitely. saying, I'm not saying, I'm not a drummer, right? So I'm not saying on a technical level how you judge a drummer. I'm saying if you're looking for an epic, massive, catchy beat to in intro a song that will be immediately noticed the second the song plays i can't find a better drummer that does that than this guy he's fucking <laughs> awesome bro that's yeah. all i can tell you i agree anything he does wasp quite yeah. right it don't make a damn bro he is bad to the bone so yeah all okay, right Derek. Well, speaking about being shit on some SOP took a steaming deuce all over this one to start it. And that's, I have, we were born to rock at number four. And some SOP <laughs> added at number 10. Wow, I know, um, man. I'm not any names, Rob, but I think it was you. Um, God. I, okay, so to me, I this song I felt was a little bit basic except for the guitar work for me it was the guitar work on this that elevated this song to a four uh, or to number four rather than it being somewhere in the middle like five or six maybe seven um but i enjoy this song uh i think this is i think this is a great song um for quiet riot damn right <laughs> I agree. Okay. Now, on to my number four, which Scott wiped his ass with. Uh, bad Boy. This has got one of the coolest melodic guitar riffs through the beginning, uh, leading up to the first verse. Fucking amazing. It's got the big chorus that I love, and that I mentioned, Perfect Tent. This song's got it all. I mean, if it was not for three fucking stellar songs, this could be number one. I can't even, that, that guitar riff, you got the first little heavy part, but then it goes in that fucking melodic riff, and my, I was fucking hooked right there. And then when you add everything in, fabulous song. I cannot believe Scott did not like that song. Well, for one, I know. the intro, it sounds like brains. he's playing with an out-of-tune guitar. Dun. That's like 30 seconds. It sounds like Paul Stanley's guitar on Coming Home, for God's sake. Um, But that's cool. Some people like out-of-tune instruments. That's, that's cool. Uh, Just because you like tuning the skin flute. I mean... <laughs> uh, All right, Darren. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, yes. Wait a minute. No, no, is, is, no is, wait, no. No, it's, no, it's, it's, it's Scott. Oh, you it's, guys, it's Scott. You it's guys Scott. doing peyote tonight or something? Probably. Mushrooms? Why? Why? I don't know, man. Y'all can't keep track for some reason. Cool. <laughs> Y'all kind of leave me out of my album here or something. Anyway, number three. A song that both of y'all just wiped your ass with that I can't believe <laughs> Takes all. <laughs> this, <laughs> this song, if you ain't too sensitive to crank the fucking thing up, 
this song here's probably got the heaviest riffs that'll just vibrate your whole fucking house, man. This song is bad as fuck, dude. This is that's one song on here that I just knew you guys would fucking love. I can't understand it, man. I mean, Give he's them. telling a fucking thing. This is not like we will rock you. Not even close. No, 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 no. We are the we yeah, are the no, champions. That one. Uh, we are, yeah, no. we are. It's 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 it's, sure it is. it's telling a fucking story, man. Last been good. Last been bad. Wasn't a good story. The vocals are phenomenal on here, dude. And you the know, I, 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 I'll give you are, this. I'll give you this. Freaking. Well, I don't I'll think DeBro shit the bed vocally on this album. No, at all. no, DeBro sounded good, and, and I'll I'll concede here that this would have been a very good uh, song for the intro of after school specials for all the short bussers who needed to feel good about themselves. <laughs> <sighs> Evidently, they well, you know, I'll take that back. They uh, they did have a greatest hits album that come out that the name of it was Winners Take All. Uh, but yeah. I don't. I guess they probably pretty sure they left this song off. I, that, no, it's on there. But uh, this this song right here, Thunderbird, ain't a pimple on this song's ass. Not even close. Not even the same fucking area code, bro. So, I mean, that's my opinion. Thunderbird is not a good song to me. Um, All right, let, let me be the voice of reason here. We got one person who loves Thunderbird. The other person loves We Are the Champions whoa, whoa, whoa. Part Two. <laughs> When you're all well, fucking it. not paying attention to the greatest Quiet Riot ballad in Love's a Bitch. That's a fucking match. Well, I, That's well, an well, I well, still well. love you. -esque. I didn't say I love Thunderbird. I just said that, oh. that they tried to clone it and oh, made okay. winners take all. He was acting like it was better than Thunderbird, though, wasn't he? Well, I don't know. It I... might be. I mean, I haven't, I haven't like raised that, that album. Yeah. So, oh. oh, all right, it is better. This is I... oh. Yeah. I don't know. For somebody who put Bad Boy at number nine, I seriously yeah. lost I can't believe trust made in it you. Past freaking seven on y'all. Uh, could you like I'm still, shut up? I'm still shut yeah, up. please. Still I mean, I like I'd like this song just a tad bit more than Rob did because I have Bad Boy at number three. I agree with you. The guitar work on this is amazing. It does have the criteria for your perfect ten, and I know there's another song that had it. It didn't save that one. This song kicks serious ass. <laughs> I love the bad boy song. So, okay, Cornholio. Yep. Go ahead. Ask for some TP now. Go ahead. Okay. So, my number three also has gotten no love on here. I wouldn't say shit on, but I think Red Alert's a fantastic song. Again, you got song. the you got the heavy flanger on the guitar. You got that massive drum sound, and I love the chords. I think that's kind of really catchy. Oh, I, I like mean, it. like I said, like Red said, Alert, like it. Boy, like if, it, if it wouldn't be for the two known commodities, which I think are better, those would be your one and two for me. But I got no problem. Like with I don't have a problem with Red Alert. I didn't finish, bro. Like I said, that no, that's where that's where that al that's where the album starts getting good. Seven oh, songs on here are fucking great to me. That, so okay. that just fell at number uh, six for me. Seven. I mean, yeah, me too. I, I, I was right at it. Okay, number two, and at least Darren did. I'll take up for him on this. He gave this a little bit more respect that it deserves, and I just knew Rob was going to love this one too because of the power, the punch, and just absolutely. This song here is what rock and rollers should write about. We were born to fucking rock, and the most yeah, I was shocked Rob didn't like this one too. But song 
with the ending like this, this is, this is, it's, it's hard to find a song that ends with this kind of fucking power. Literally. Okay, here's dude, the thing. I'm going to, obviously, insane. I've got to go back and listen to this when the podcast is over because I'm used to Scott having different tastes than me, but if Darren's surprised, I don't like it. I got to go back, give it another listen. But I will say this. If your main selling point is the end of the song. No, that's, it's the that's whole a hor- song. That's a horrible no, no, thing. That, 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 that's a horrible thing because if I don't like it halfway through, I'm not finishing it to find out there's a cool end. No, 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 no. That, no. I love that. If I'm stuck, For me, it, like I said, for me, I had it at four, but I thought the guitar work is what really elevated this It is this great. Song. It is. You're right. Um, he shreds the hell, so, dude. Yeah. For me, it wasn't like I said. I. Now are you talking I, about I the solo or the movie. actual guitar throughout? The whole, the guitar throughout. Because like, yeah, because I think the guitar she solo does nothing for me. Any no, no, no. guitar player no. in the '80s could do that. If I thought it were the solo, that's not that wouldn't be enough for me to to, to say the guitar work saves the song. It finishes. Okay. It, it fits it to perfection, though, man. It is great, and the ending is drawn out, but it is not boring at all, and it's not too long either. It's perfect. You'll know whenever you listen to it again what I'm talking about. Man, and you hear that I didn't plan. have anything bad written. I just had generic filler. It just not stood out to me. It's not like I said this song is horrible like Winners Take All. I just put it below Winners Take All because nothing really grabbed me. At least Winner Takes All. I could see what they were trying to do, even though I don't like what they were trying to do because I hate the song this was modeled after, whether it's a fact or not. In my mind, somebody in there was thinking we are the champions with this thing. Just the way it was sung. No, it was I in got that, that same too. vein. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you can. Yeah, I mean, I understand it. Winners take all. We are the champions. You know, yeah. You know. This, is, this is way better than right. we are the champions, but I hate that I fucking know. song by Queen so much. That really? it, it just damn. Yeah, I hate. I I have never liked that song by Queen. In fact, one of the most annoying things in the history of radio is you get to hear "We Will Rock You," but guess what comes right along fucking after it? It's a two for one with that slow turd at the end. I, I just separate the two as different tracks. If you hear Detroit Rock City on the goddamn radio, you don't automatically get King of the Nighttime World, even though they run into each other. Separate. That's all I'm saying. <clears throat> all right. Were you done on your number two there, Scott? I'm done number two in man. All right. <laughs> so coming in and in that slot for me, um, I know Scott says that, you know, he didn't hate anything on here, but he did have this awfully early on. I think party all night is a fun rocking song. And that's where I have Party All Night is at number two. This song works. I love it. Uh, I I mean, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Originally, you were talking about the intro. Not a long intro, but yeah, you're talking about the video. Yeah. Okay. So number two for me, also Party All Night. Uh, I love the song. I loved it since it was released. I loved the video. Uh, I thought it was hilarious. Just a big old party. I think we can all identify with that scene. If you've seen the video, except hardly any of us who had the luxury of having a live fucking band in the house while you're partying. But and, would that have been pizza. fucking cool? I don't do anchovies and <laughs> tuna on pizza. Yeah. Ain't that what can, you, can you imagine having a house party at Heights with Ransom playing in the basement? I mean, Jesus Christ. That would have been kick ass. <laughs> wow. But <laughs> Wow. So well, party on that, yeah, great song, great anthem, great rock uh, message. I just, I love it. <laughs> yeah. All the way, bro. Okay. Yeah, I think we're all finally going to agree with something, and I do love it, always have, always will. Fucking just as good, the video and the song. I know it didn't chart as big. It's come on, feel the noise, but they pulled another one out from Slade, and it works. Mama, we're all crazy now is fucking awesome. I mean, literally, it is a, it's, I hear it every day, every day. 
it's on playlist. It comes through more Blade, every day. Blade had some good tunes. They just had poor execution. And I mean, I, yeah, I never was a huge Slade fan, but I did have that when they came out with our eighties, early eighties, uh, cassette, uh, it had run, run away on it. That That's was, a good tune. Yeah. yeah. I like that one. Yeah. And I did. I, yeah. I didn't even know they had these songs. You know, when Quiet Right put these out, I thought they were Quiet Right songs. No. See? I, did, I didn't did. either. I didn't either. Oh, yeah. I think I most did, people I fell into I that same that, bucket. Yeah. I didn't Slade know didn't, until, not until high school. Slade that I know didn't that. chart with any of this, right? I mean, yeah. 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 The they, only thing I knew from Slade was My Oh My and, and uh, Run Run Away run, or run whatever. Away. Yeah. Slade yeah. charted in the UK with these. Yeah. Yeah, but I've, I'll tell you I've what might have been part UK. of the problem. Maybe not in the UK. I can't judge their success there, but I could say the timing, at least to fit in with hair. Maybe if they would have made a push in the early 70s, but in the 80s, this band would have never worked in the United States because they were some goofy, goofy looking motherfuckers. They were some wild I mean, looking motherfucking oh, leprechauns. Well, they're bricks. I mean, God damn, glitter all over one. Yeah. It, they did jam. They had some jamming shit. So yeah, they had some good tunes. But Mama, we're all yeah, crazy I, now. I don't, I don't know if you want to add anything to Mama, we're all crazy now. I don't. Obviously, I don't think I have to. I mean, the song yeah, speaks I mean, for the itself. only thing I'm going to say is, guess what, guys? Perfect ten again. Uh, this is this is Metal Health Part Two for me. This matches up more than more with that than it does. Come on, feel the noise. Uh, but it's fantastic. And when I and granted, it's not the real Quiet Riot, but I've seen them twice now. Once with Rudy Sarzo, once before he came back, and then nobody else being legitimate members. However, well, actually, the first time the bass player was the bass player that was before Rudy Sarzo. So both times I saw him within the last three years, there's been one original-ish member. But I'll tell you, that whole fucking crowd went nuts for almost every Quiet Riot song, but what brought the biggest, biggest, I mean, break your eardrum pops in an outdoor place with a couple thousand people is the intro to Metal Health, the intro to Mama We're All Crazy Now, and the intro to uh, Wild and the Young. That's how Epic Benelli was at doing those fucking drum intros. They didn't have to play a note. As soon as that fuck... In fact, when they first saw him, they did a little split thing where the drummer would warm up and come into it, and he'd play like he's going to break into Metal Health, and then they went into something else. But the crowd went nuts thinking, holy shit already! I mean, that's how epic he was at those drum beats. I'm not saying it was complex. I'm saying brilliant. Catchy. I mean, yeah. And he, yeah. Didn't, he didn't get as much attention uh, when he passed away because he died at the same time Eddie Van Halen did. You know, so yeah. that kind of overshadowed Benelli's death. I mean, yeah, there was clips and stuff, but. You know, you just didn't hear much about it. Just like with Eric. I'll tell you, you you want to know what's hard to listen to? They found a song and re-released it, and I forget what it is. Me and my brother both watched it, and both of us said, I'll never fucking watch this goddamn video again. It had clips of Benelli and Kevin Dubrow. It was a killer ballad that Quiet Riot just put out, like, last year to commemorate these deaths or two years ago or whatever it was. And it was like a lost track that they remastered and brought out with the mm-hmm, bros yeah. boys there. And they were like, oh my God, I remember it was that. so tear jerking for someone like me who doesn't cry about movies and shit. What? Man, no. I, I cannot bring myself to watch it again. What song? Darren, you finding it? Yeah, Darren's I'm looking, looking for it. You watch the video, but man. I remember it when is, that came out. Oh my God. All right, so they released a song featuring Kevin Dubrow and Frankie Benali. Um, and this was, when was this article written? Looks like it was rediscovered in 2020, or 2021, yep. initially recorded in 2003. Uh, I Can't Hold On is the name yes. of the song. 
Wow. Find that fucking video, man. Find that video, Scott. It's it's I fucking feel. it's so touching. It's such a beautiful tribute to those two guys. But it starts showing Benelli in his cancer treatments and shit. I was like, Jesus Christ. I mean, it was hard to yeah. watch. They need yeah. to so forward to that. He was Two thousand six or something when he died, right? No, this was twenty one, two thousand twenty one. Twenty twenty one is when it was released. It was originally recorded as a demo in two thousand and three. Um, down to the bone. The that we were talking about were quite right. I've that's the one I have. I've got that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anyway, now that uh, winner, what was the song called? I can't hold on. So this was that was originally that was originally recorded with the bro as a demo. They discovered rediscovered it in 2021 and re-released it in 2023. Correct. Oh, but the the video shows tribute to both lives of the bro and Benelli. It looks like it was found on an iPod that was uncovered in 2021. Um, and then with the help of, um, looks like Frankie's wife, they put it all together with a song uh, and the video um, as a tribute to both Frankie and Kevin. Okay. Uh, did you, did you, a week recording? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Just making sure. Um, okay. Well. I think uh, that was a success. We kind of all were all over the place. We had matched up a couple of times each, but I think we can all say it's a damn good album. Um, We just like certain songs more than the others and vice versa. Yeah, better than I thought. But but it seems to be with these well-known albums. Jesus, Scott, your phone. Was he using a Nokia? What the hell? (laughs) Thank you.